Hey guys, it's Lucky here, and today we're going to be talking about the biggest mistakes I see new players make and the biggest mistakes I made when I was a new player. I'm going to go over the things you should absolutely avoid doing yourself to make sure that you don't waste time or currency or worse. These are the mistakes we all made, and I'm going to try to help you not make the same ones. So let's get into it. One of the biggest mistakes I made as a new player was saving all of my abilities with cooldowns for the boss fights. I wouldn't use them on the trash, I would save them like they were gold until we got to the boss and then I would unload all of them there. And they would come off cooldown and I would use them again. And the reason they were coming off cooldown multiple times in a single boss fight is their cooldowns usually aren't that long at all. Definitely be sure to use your cooldowns during the trash fights that lead up to the boss fights. A lot of times when you get an experienced tank and an experienced healer together, the trash poles can be the most dangerous part of the dungeon because they're going to pull as many mobs as they can at a time, constantly testing the group's limitations to see how fast they can clear the dungeon. They might pull one pack of mobs or they might pull three or four. When you see your tank doing those big pulls, be sure to pop your cooldowns as well to unload as much damage or as much healing as possible to make sure the tank doesn't go down and that all the mobs die. You can hover over abilities to see what their cooldown is. This one here has 120 second cooldown, while this one here is only 90 seconds. This one here is only 60 seconds and it'll tell you right there it says recast time that's the cooldown that's how often you can use it. And so you can see they're really not that long. You'll be able to use them multiple times on the trash packs leading up to the boss fights. And then you can still use them again in the boss fights themselves. So don't hoard these. Be sure to use them. The next item on the list is don't worry about the meta. Pick the job that's fun to you. There isn't a meta that is so defined that if you pick the wrong thing, you won't be able to do some form of content in this game. Not at all. You can absolutely do any piece of content in the game on any job in the game. And not to worry, if you pick today's meta, by the time you get to that really sweaty difficult content the meta might have changed so don't worry about the meta pick the thing that looks fun and especially pick the thing that looks cool because if you think the job looks cool if you think the abilities and the armor looks cool you're most likely going to enjoy it and when the time comes if you ever want to change jobs it's as easy as changing weapons and it doesn't take long at all to level up an alt job otherwise known as an alternate class anytime you need to. The third one is one you'll hear a lot in this game and in this community, and that's don't rush the game. Final Fantasy Online has an amazing story, and it's one that you should absolutely enjoy. But the beginning is definitely a bit of a slow burn. ARR, as it's called, A Realm Reborn, definitely starts out slower than the rest of the game. But everything you learn about yourself and the characters that you interact with is going to be useful information in the stories and the arcs that follow. So definitely take your time, really resist the urge to rush to the end game because there's plenty of amazing content on the way there and the story is going to be one of your favorite parts of this game by the time you reach the end. I promise you, even if the story isn't something you're excited about in the beginning, you are going to be screaming with excitement or crying with sadness or jumping with joy by the time you get to the final expansions of this game. So don't rob yourself of that experience. Trust me, take your time, enjoy the story, soak it up. It gets better than it starts, I promise you. Speaking of the story, the main story quest is going to give you more than enough experience to get your levels as you progress through the game. You'll see a lot of side quests, you'll see a lot of daily activities you can do that can give you experience and other rewards, but just know you should definitely be focusing on the main story quest as you progress through the game. Save those side quests if you can for when you're leveling your alternate job, as your alternate jobs won't be able to take advantage of the main story quest experience anymore, and so you're going to need to come up with ways to level them. I'll go over a few of those here in a bit. Just know for now that you want to focus the main story quest, it's what's going to progress you through the game, it's what's going to unlock dungeons and trials and all of the content to come. If you're doing a lot of stuff on the side, you're going to outlevel it, so you're going to be a level 55 doing a level 50 quest. And that's not ideal. There is one exception to that rule, however, and that will be the blue quest, the blue side quest. The blue side quests unlock content in the game. They can unlock classes, they can unlock dungeons, they can even unlock trials. Sometimes they unlock aether currents that are eventually going to allow you to fly in that zone. All that to say is some of the blue quests are definitely worth doing. Definitely not all of them, especially right away, because if you're not going to play a job, then you don't need to take the time to unlock it. There's a lot of jobs in this game and you certainly don't need to spend your time unlocking every single one of them right up front. But if you do see a job that unlocks a dungeon that looks cool or a trial that looks cool or even an aether current, definitely consider picking it up and doing it. The next type of quest that you definitely have to do, these are just as important as the main story quest and that's going to be your job quest. The main story quest can always be found here in the top left corner of your screen. This box right here 
If you click on it, it will show you exactly where you need to go to do the next piece of your main story quest. Likewise, if you click on the text just below this box right here, this is your job quest, and it will tell you where you need to go to do the next piece of your job story on your character. Job quests are very important because these unlock your character's abilities. These unlock your character's progression. These unlock your character's passives for your job that you're playing. So every job in the game, right, the black mage, the white mage, they all have their own job quests that they have to do to unlock their specific abilities and if you're not doing these you're not going to be unlocking very critical abilities for your job and your character is going to be a lot weaker for it and early on you're going to get one of these quests every five levels and later on it'll become every two or three depending on which part of the game you're in just be sure that you keep up with them so they're always unlocking your newest and best abilities Another common mistake that new players make is they don't upgrade their gear and they don't know how to upgrade their gear. If you open up your character screen, you can see all of your gear at a glance. It's really, really easy to see what you have and what you don't have equipped. So if we open up our inventory with control I on PC, the armory chest basically breaks down your gear into separate categories so you can see what pieces of gear you can and can't wear. If it's grayed out, that means you can't wear it on your current job. It's gonna be for another job in the game or it's too high level for you. All you need to do is after you get some gear every once in a while, click this button right here. This is the recommended gear button. When you click it, it's going to show you if you have any gear that is better than what you're wearing in your inventory for for your job. This is a very reliable way to make sure that your character is always wearing the best stuff that he can. Simply hit the equip button and he'll put on that best in slot gear or at least the best stuff that you have in your inventory that he can wear at the moment. Be sure to check this button every few levels every time you've picked up some gear. Just go ahead and open your character screen, hit this button and check and see if you can't put a better piece of gear on. Just as important as this is something that a lot of new players don't know and that is your gear set list button. So once you have your best in slot gear on, you hit this button right here and it will save the gear in your gear set list to create a gear set list just hit the plus sign here and then it'll make one and anytime i want to play the dark mage now that i made a gear set list by hitting the plus sign anytime i want to play the dark knight i just have to click dark and click equip set likewise if i want to play my black mage because i use the gear set list to save that gear in here, I can just click Black Mage Equip Set. And you don't have to manually go through and equip the best in slot gear for each job every time you want to switch jobs. This makes it very easy to switch from Black Mage to Astro to White Mage in seconds. It doesn't take any time at all, as long as you know that you just need to open up this menu to do so. Another big mistake that new players make in dungeons is forgetting to use their AOE abilities. If you're the tank, you should be using AOE abilities when you're pulling more than one mob to make sure that you have aggro on all the mobs around and they're not attacking other players. Likewise, if you're a damage dealer and your tank has three or more things on them, you should probably be using your AOE abilities to be knocking all of them down faster. You don't want to be using single target abilities when the tank has three or more things attacking him. If you take too long to kill all of the adds, your healer might run out of magic and your tank might die and then when the tank goes down, everybody else will follow. Okay, speaking of things you need to do in battle, let's talk about what each role is really responsible for in this game or the most common mistakes that new players make when they're playing their roles. First of all, let's start with a tank. Okay, the first thing that the tank's going to have to do anytime they enter the dungeon is activate their enmity generator. For the Dark Knight, that ability is called Grit. For the Paladin, it's called Iron Will. Whatever it's called for your tank, make sure you press it as soon as you get into any dungeon or trial in the game. It's gonna be very important for your ability to maintain aggro for all the mobs that you should have control of as the tank. If you forget to activate this ability, you'll know it almost instantly because mobs will be attacking your DPS and your healer instead of you. If that happens, stop whatever you're doing and hit the grit ability and then start casting your AOE abilities on the mobs to get control of them again. It's not really an if this is going to happen to you, it's more of a when. It happens to even the most experienced tanks after they've been playing the game for years. Every once in a while, you'll go into a dungeon, you'll forget to hit this ability and you'll run forward, pull a big group of mobs and they'll all start attacking your team instead of you and you'll probably wipe and everybody will have a good laugh on it. It just happens, which begs the question, why isn't this turned on by default for the tank when they enter a dungeon? I don't know, but until Square Enix changes that, just remember that you have to activate your enmity generator every time you enter a dungeon or a trial when you're the tank. If you are fighting one mob, use your single target abilities to maintain aggro and do big damage to that mob. Tanks do incredible damage in Final Fantasy 14, so don't think that your job is simply 
to stand there and make sure that the things hate you. You want to stand there and do as much damage to them as possible. By doing more damage, you help the group kill things faster. You also maintain aggro on the enemy because the more damage you're doing, the more likely they are to attack you. An important note for healers out there is be sure to let your tank get aggro on mobs before you start casting regen or big heals or things that would otherwise pull aggression of mobs before your tank has a chance to do damage to them. If the mobs all turn and attack you, you're going to die very fast. Another important thing that a lot of healers overlook when they're new is you can tell which debuffs can be removed and which ones can't. Simply look for a small health bar over the debuff sign and to know whether or not you can remove it. If it has the health bar, it's a debuff that you as the healer can remove from that party member. What about the DPS? Well, as a damage dealer, just make sure that you stand close enough to your healer to get those AOE heals and any buffs they might be throwing on the ground. Also, make sure you are aware of what a limit break is and how it works. Basically, what you want to know is under the general section of your actions and traits, there's this thing called a limit break. The game doesn't really tell you about this, but it's there and you should be using it as the damage dealer. 99% of the time, the group is going to want one of the damage dealers to use this. Don't save it for your tank. Don't save it for your healer unless you're doing one of the very, very few trials in the game where that is recommended to do so. If you're not sure, just go ahead and use it because 99% of the time you'll be right if and when you get to the trials where you need to save it for the tank. Well, you'll find that out then. Until then, fire this bad boy off whenever you can. You'll see a limit break bar at the top of your screen that fills up slowly as you run through the dungeon or trial. When one of the bars fills up, you're okay to use the limit break. Some people choose to use the limit break when they see the tank do a really massive pull to expedite the trash kill, and some people will use it on the final boss and the dungeon. How you use it is going to be up to you and your group. Just make sure that as the damage dealer, you are using it. And one last thing about the limit break is it is a party wide ability. So if the bar fills up and you use it, you are using it for the entire group. The entire group fills the bar and when one person uses it, it goes away for everyone. Another cool fact is that as you're running through dungeons, there will be tons of treasure chests, sometimes after a random trash pack, sometimes in a corner, sometimes it'll appear after you kill a boss. If anyone interacts with that chest, the loot will show up for everyone. All you have to do is look for the little button in the bottom right corner of your screen that allows you to check the loot that has been gathered. You'll either be able to choose need, greed, or pass for the items. You'll be able to need it if it's for your job. You'll be able to greed it if it's for someone else's job. And you'll be able to pass it if you don't want it. If someone needs it and you greed it, they're going to get it. If everybody greeds it, it's going to choose a random person based on your dice roll. Another fantastic tip is there's going to be item level requirements in the game for various types of content. For instance, when you get to 50 in order to unlock the trials, you'll need to get your eye level up to 90 for some content. And it's very, very common to get to 50 with nowhere near an eye level of 90. This is where some of the daily activities in the duty roulette will come in really handy. If you do one of these duty roulettes here, you'll see that they give you Allegan Tombstone of Poetics 100. If you do the main scenario, it gives you 300. However, just be aware that this does take a very long time. This is sometimes a 45 minute adventure uh, with a lot of cut scenes, but it's also incredibly rewarding with it being not uncommon for you to get one to three levels just from doing one of these. Once you have some of these poetics, you can buy item level 130 gear, which will rapidly begin to increase your item level shown right here so that you can do the content that has an item level requirement. Once you've got at least 300 Allegan Tombstones, look for this blue bag in one of the major cities, such as Ulda. In Ulda, it's located right next to the main Aetherite Crystal. You come talk to the NPC who will have this symbol above their head, and it'll say Sundry Splendors underneath their name. Interact with them, and then choose Ironworks, eye level 130. In this case, this is level 50 gear, but it's also 130, which is going to be drastically higher than some of your gear slots. So just open up your inventory, see which pieces of gear are the lowest, find the lowest piece of gear. Maybe you have one that's only eye level 39. It fell way behind. You would come in here if that was the earring and you would buy the earring for 280 elegant tombstone of poetics. The weapon is the most expensive at 600 with everything else being significantly cheaper. The chest is at 510. The hat is at 345. So there's varying costs. It's really easy to get enough tombstones to buy a piece of this to greatly upgrade your item level. And this will be a great way for you to increase your item level every 10 levels. So once you get to 50, you can buy the level 50 stuff with your tombstones. This is usually your best in slot gear, and it will be better than anything you find until you get to quite a few levels later. Then once you hit 60, you can do the same thing again. All of those tombstones that you've collected, when you hit 60, you can go to the level 60 vendor who will be in a different place and buy 
the level 60 tombstone gear. Same thing at 70 and 80 and so on. This is usually the best gear in the game for your level. And there's a cap on how many tombstones you can hold. So there's no point in saving them endlessly because you'll just be disappearing them to the void if you don't use them. So use them. They're easy to get and they give you really good gear in the process. Another thing worth noting is that you can extract materia from your gear. While you're going through the main story quest early on, you'll be taught how to extract materia from your gear. And it's really simple to do. And it's something that most players overlook for a very long time. Materia is going to be basically a free form of currency for you. You'll be able to use it in your gear. You'll be able to gamble for things with it. You'll be able to sell it. It's something that you definitely want to take advantage of. And here's how you know when you can do it. If you look at the symbols here to the left of your inventory, this indicates how full your inventory is right here. You can see these vertical dots. These are the gear that you're actually wearing. Whenever one of these dots is white, that piece of gear is ready to be extracted. In order to extract, simply open up your actions and trades menu, go to general, and then click on Materia Extraction. When you click on Materia Extraction, it'll bring up the gear that your character is wearing and it'll tell you the level of spirit bond that the gear has. Once the gear is 100% spirit bound, you can extract Materia from it. There's no reason to keep it at 100% spirit bond. All this is for is for you to get Materia to use in crafting or to sell or to gamble with. So you definitely want to do this anytime you see a white dot down here. Go ahead and hit the Materia Extraction button and then any piece that is 100% spirit bound, just click on it and it'll say once Materia has been extracted from this, it'll go down to 1%. Proceed. Yeah. And get your Materia. Definitely do this anytime you can. As you're leveling up your character, there's no reason to hold on to this as you're leveling up. It's free crafting materials and it's free currency. Another thing that you're going to unlock as you're playing is a grand company. This is just basically your faction. And one of the most useful things about these factions is you can sell gear to them once you level them up enough. So definitely level up your grand company. It'll tell you how to do that as you're unlocking it. And don't forget about it. Once you've unlocked the grand company and you've leveled up your rank in the grand company enough, you'll be able to talk to your officer and say undertake supply and provisioning missions. Once you do this, you can click on expert delivery and all of that gear that you're picking up from dungeons that it's just not good enough for you to wear anymore or uh, maybe it never was right there's no gear in this game that you pick up that is worthless it all has some kind of value even the bad gear can be sold for what we call seals right here you can see the seal value of an item if you click on it you can deliver it boom 282 seals i just got for selling that item when you get enough seals you can do some cool stuff with it you can use these seals to buy various things like you can come to the guy next door here and you can choose material and you can buy ventures anytime you don't know what to buy this is never a bad option you can also buy little boxes that have a chance to have a minion or a mount in them when you have 20,000 seals it is very easy to get 20,000 seals because as you get higher level you'll get a piece of gear that sells for over a thousand just by itself so definitely level up your grand company and when you have more gear than you know what to do with and you're not wearing it come here interact with the NPC click expert delivery but also also one very important thing I need to make sure I mention here is hide gear set items make sure this says hide gear set items right this is another reason it's very important to use the gear sets right here these gear set right here this is referring to this gear set list if you put on gear and you save it update gear set this gear that you're wearing will not appear in the list of items you can sell to the npc if you don't choose hide gear set items you can sell items that your character should be wearing one of your jobs is wearing that item like for instance this is all my black mage gear if i sold this i would be selling the gear that my black mage is literally wearing right now we don't want that so we want to hide gear set items likewise if my black mage was wearing the gear but i didn't save it to the gear set list when i came here even though i said hide gear set items the gear would still show up so make sure you know whenever you come here and hit recommended gear and equip the next thing you should always do is hit update gear set boom you have the best gear on you saved the best gear loadout now there's no way that when you're interacting with a merchant you can accidentally sell something that one of your jobs is wearing uh and the last thing on the list is once you've unlocked your chocobo and you've done the follow-up quest my feisty chocobo simply use some geishal greens to summon your chocobo once you summon the chocobo it will fight by your side you can level it up as a healer a tank simply simply go into your character menu and then choose companion here you can choose its skills you can choose to make it a tank a healer or a dps it's really easy as a new player to forget to summon your chocobo when you're out and about killing things which means it's not leveling up so make sure to try to always have it out with you anytime you're out killing things you can use one geishal green to summon it for 30 minutes you can use a second one as you can see here it says it's got 29 minutes remaining and if I use another Geishal Green, it now has one hour remaining. 
Gosh, old greens are not expensive, so feel free to always pop two whenever you summon him to make sure he's going to be out for another hour. You can buy tons more Gashel Greens from various NPC merchants throughout the game. For a much more in-depth, complete beginner's guide, be sure to check out the link in the description below, which will take you to an incredibly in-depth, complete beginner guide for Final Fantasy XIV Online. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing for more Final Fantasy XIV content. If you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves Final Fantasy XIV or pick my brain about the game, be sure to swing by my stream over at twitch.tv slash luckyghost. I hope you have a fantastic day, night, or evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video.